Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, thank you for being here. I love this book because I think the book is um, both, it's very practical, mm -hmm. and you get all of the ideas in the book, but then you get the CD at the end that helps you actually take the method and begin applying it right away. So, I, bravo. You thank did a you great very job. Much. My first question for you is what's a nice girl like you doing self hypnosis or hypnosis <laughs> techniques for people? I, um, I got into hypnosis 20 years ago when I was with the Ministry of Defence in the UK. So I can't talk about it. Oh. I was actually with the MOD. Um, I was helping families, um, army families. They were very young. They had lots of problems. And I was introduced to hypnosis. I was taught it by the ministry. And uh, X number of years later, here I am in full-time practice and loving every minute of it. Oh, that's so interesting. So you do have a full-time practice. I do, yes. In the UK. In London. In, the Lon in London. Well, um, maybe the first question for people who are tuning in right now and, and don't know anything about it, what is hypnosis? Hypnosis is a state of focused attention where you can get what you want and stop fooling yourself. Because that's the most important thing. Most people know what they want, but they fool themselves about how they can go about getting it. They think, oh, I need a gym membership, I need to do this, I need... Th you, you have everything you need already to make the change. And that's one of the things I think is really key to the program. Mm -hmm. Everything you need to know, you already have. But the program helps you apply that knowledge and stops you tricking yourself in the process. I feel like you take hypnosis off the you know, the gimmicky stage show and bring it into just a very normal, natural thing everyone can do. I see it as a completely normal, natural thing. Um, consciousness is a continuum, you know, being profoundly asleep or being highly alert and hypnosis fits somewhere in there. Anybody who watches adverts on TV, they've been hypnotized. Anybody who's been in love, they've been hypnotized. Anybody who's driven along a road and thought, gosh, I'm much further than I thought I should be, they've been hypnotized. And you hypnotize yourself. Mm. So when we watch those infomercials late at night, uh -huh. that is... Danger. Uh, danger. <laughs> That's why I own so many useless products. <laughs> you know, I think it's always important to pay attention to how authors begin and end their books because they want to begin it in the most important way and they want to end it summing up everything. And on page one of your book, paragraph one, you say the very first words of the book, follow 20% of the suggestions in this program and you will lose weight and maintain that weight loss forever and without the struggle. What did you mean by that 20%? Okay. There's a thing called the 80-20 rule. When we go out there and we do all sorts of different things in life, we don't know what's going to work. And out of the things that work, it's usually around only 20% of the things that we do that really make the major changes happen. So you can read all the way through the book and think, that's not for me, that's not for me. That is for me. That's not for me, that's not for me. You'll pick out the things, you will pick out the 20%, mm. your 20%. So actually, you're not doing much of the program. You're only doing your part of the program. So it's customized, in totally a sense, specifically for you. You are customizing it to yourself. When you speak about weight loss in the book, you talk about the fact that it's not just poor eating habits and lack of exercise mm. that cause us to have weight issues. There are other causes as well. There are, there are a number of other causes. The main thing is your history. Your history dictates your habits and it dictates your moods. And what I get you to do in the program is to recognize that you don't need to carry on habits that are relevant to your history. You don't need to keep carrying the moods over. Because when you pull those away, you remove false hunger and you respond to true hunger instead. So you're eating when you're hungry, you're enjoying what you're eating, you're not doing stressy eating. So I think it's very important to recognize that mood is really important in the way that we eat and how we relate to ourselves. Mm. So d have you had personal experience using this technique for weight loss? I certainly have. Yeah? I, I think every woman and many, many men recognize that, that weight is an issue. And it's, it's more about how you feel about yourself. You know, it's not that you necessarily need to be skinny, but you need to feel good, you need to feel healthy. And being at a good weight is representative of feeling good about yourself. You feel more motivated, you feel more energized. And if you don't feel at, your, at the weight you should be, then you don't want to do these things. So it's, it's interesting, when people make the change and they lose the weight, they want other changes afterwards. Mm. It gives you a huge amount of confidence. So I believe that getting your mind right first, 
then your body change will follow. Um, one of the things I really liked about this book, another thing I liked about it, is the fact that this is basically a whole life approach. It's not just a gimmick, yeah. do this and the weight will come off. It's really a whole life approach. Why is that so effective? When people talk about weight, they talk about weight control. And for me, the most important word there is control. Because when you have control over your life, you're not obsessing about food. It's not the focus. And you can actually make changes in a very mm. positive way. Well, let me just pick out this piece that jumped out at me. You write, once you have completed the program, your thought processes will be altered in such a way that diets will become a thing of the past. Is Absolutely. that what you're saying? Diets become a thing of the past because you relate to food differently. It's no longer your friend. It's one of the things that you enjoy. It becomes a pleasure. And I think that's really important for people to recognize that there are two different types of eating. There's the eating when you're hungry for food. There's the eating when you're hungry for emotion. Mm. And I separate the two off and help you you know, feed your own emotional hunger, feel good about yourself, feel positive about yourself. You don't need someone else to validate you. You validate you. And that's what I think is important. It's not about thinking yourself thin necessarily, but it's about thinking yourself in control. Mm -hmm. It's empowering. And seeing yourself thin too. You talk Absolutely. about that visualizing yourself in the way that you want to look. Being able to see yourself as you wish to be is one of the key things that hypnosis does. It helps you put that image into your mind and your brain will start to work towards it by changing your habits. Mm -hmm. So um, here's a specific question about one of the techniques you talk about. You talk about detoxing. And the reason I bring that up is that's a big thing right now in the United States. People are detoxing like crazy. And you write, most people do not need to detoxify their bodies. Their lifestyles, yes, their bodies, no. Yeah, what do you absolutely. mean by that? One of the things that is very, it, that really is unspoken about detoxes is that they work short term. They'll help people lose the weight, but they don't give you the structure to maintain that weight loss. So if you need to do something for a very short period of time, you know, maybe to get into a wedding dress or whatever it might be, people use a detox and then they find that after that period of time, the weight starts to creep up. Detoxes in terms of food don't work but detoxes in terms of the stresses in your life, they do work. Mm. In the back of the book, there is a CD, mm. and the CD is divided into three parts. How do people use the CD to help themselves lose weight? Okay. There are three tracks to the CD. The first one is about the past. You listen to that once when prompted in the book. The second is about the present. You listen to that once when prompted in the book. The third one is about the future, and this is about reconditioning your habits, getting yourself very much into shape for making the changes, and that you listen to for 21 nights. So just before you go to sleep at night, you put the CD on, and you listen to it, and you can fall asleep to it. And what that does is it takes the capacity to change into your dreams, so you can start to dream about who you're going to mm. be, how you're going to be, and that's why it becomes a very much an unconscious process. So that's the way that it works, very simply. And also if you need a top-up, you listen to the last track again. So it's You've, there for you. Now that's a UKism, a top up? A top up. Um, what would the expression be in America? Uh, I don't know, what's the expression? If you, if you want to reinforce. Ah, uh, if you need to recharge or yeah. if you need to. Yeah, so if yeah. you need to reinforce it, if you need to recharge it, you listen to the last track again. Okay, got it. So thank you, Ursula, for being with us and talking with us today uh, about your book. You can think yourself thin. This is a great book, and I would like to encourage you to stay and watch the next segment where Ursula talks more about the ideas about hypnosis and weight loss and how we can choose the kind of life experience that we would like to have. So thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Tartar Talks.